Let us see what are the different components of the execution plan. If you look at the execution plan closely, these are the different components. That is nothing but ID, operation, name, rows, bytes, cost, and the time. The first component that is operation, it indicates the method the optimizer chooses to access the data. For example, this operation number three, index unix scan. It means the optimizer is making use of the index emp, emp id underscore pk index to access the employees table. Similarly, the operation number four, that is index unix scan, is making use of the index department id underscore pk to access the department's table on the primary key that is department id. You can see other operations as well, that is the select statement, the nested loop, that is nothing but the join between employees and the department's table, and so on. The next component is the name. It basically shows the name of the object on which the specific operation is being performed. For example, the operation number two, table access by index row ID, is performed on the table, that is employees. The next component rows determines the number of rows that is expected out of each operation. For example, in operation number three, index unix scan using the employee ID underscore PK index is expecting one row out of this operation. The number of bytes is similar to the number of rows. It also shows the number of bytes that is expected out of each operation. The next component that is cost, it indicates the cost that each operation takes. Cost is measured in terms of CPU and IO resources. The higher the cost, the more the CPU and the IO resource consumption. And the last component that is time, it indicates the estimated time each operation is going to take. For example, the operation index unix scan, making use of the index department ID underscore PK is estimated to complete in 0.01 seconds. Now let us talk about the access predicate and the filter predicates. Access predicates are nothing but the columns that are used in the where part of the clause to include the rows. Now, whenever you want to execute a query, we first have to access the table or basically touch the table. And we usually access the table using the index. So the access predicate basically ensures that we only access only the interested rows. Access predicates are generally applied on an index. Now, if you want to execute the query, select star from employees, where employee ID equal to 10 and gender equal to F, we first have to access the table or basically touch the table employees. Now, you can't touch the entire table because if you touch the entire table, it will lead to a full table scan. Now, since we have a where clause predicates, that is employee ID and gender, we can make use of the index which is built on top of employee ID. And if possibly, if you have created an index on the gender, we can also make use of the index on the gender column and these indexes will turn out to be your access predicates. For example, if we make use of the index on the employee ID equal to 10, what it means is we are accessing only one row that is employee ID equal to 10 as employee ID is the primary key. So since we are accessing or basically touching the employees table using the index on the employee ID equal to 10, employee ID becomes your access predicate because we are trying to include the rows wherever employee ID is equal to 10. Now coming to the filter predicates, filter predicates are nothing but those predicates in the where part of the clause that are used to exclude the rows. It means we will filter out unwanted rows from the access to rows. And that is done by using the filter predicates. Filter predicates are generally applied on a table. Now, if we take the same example, we have already accessed employer ID is equal to 10. So that means employer ID equal to 10 becomes your access predicate. Now we get one row out of this access. If that employer ID equal to 10 has a gender is equal to F, then that row will be retained. If employer ID equal to 10 is, is not having gender is equal to F, then that row will be discarded. So in this case, since we are excluding the unwanted rows based on gender equal to F, the gender column becomes your filter predicates. We'll talk more about the access predicates and filter predicates in the forthcoming slides. Now let's take an example of join between the two tables that is employees and the departments. 
to understand the access predicate and the filter predicate in depth. In this query, select employee ID from employees and departments table. If we look at the where part of the clause, Oracle is going to execute e dot department ID is equal to fifty first. Now, in order to execute e dot department ID equal to fifty, Oracle has to access the employees table or basically touch the employees table. And like we mentioned in the previous slide, it cannot access the entire employees table because that will lead to a full table scan. So what Oracle will do is it will try to make use of the index on the department ID for the employees table so that it can access only those rows from the employees table where department ID is equal to 50. So department ID is equal to 50 becomes your access predicates because we are accessing the employees table based on the department ID to include only those rows where department ID is equal to 50. Now since this query has a join operation on e dot department ID equal to d dot department ID and since we already know e dot department ID is equal to 50 what Oracle in this execution plan did is it first accessed d dot department ID is equal to 50 because we already know the value of e dot department ID which is 50. So in this execution plan what Oracle actually did is it first accessed the departments table using the department ID where its value is 50 and if you see the operation number 2 index unique scan the index being used is department ID is equal to pk this is the first operation that is getting executed. It is expecting only one row because department ID is a primary key in the departments table. Now if you look at the access and filter predicates, operation number 2 which is nothing but your index unique scan, what it actually did is it accessed the departments table using the index on the department ID where its value is 50. The next operation that is executed by Oracle is operation number 4 that is index range scan using the index employee emp underscore department underscore ix. Now if you look at the operation number 4, it is nothing but accessing the employees table for department id is equal to 50. So it means oracle has executed this operation that is e dot department id is equal to 50. Now since it has already accessed the department table, it will now go ahead and access the employees table. So operation number 4 is the operation which has executed next where it accessed the employees table using the department id column where its value is 50 and it is expecting 45 rows as part of the output. After a fourth operation, operation number 3 will get executed and if you look at operation number 3, it says filter e dot salary is greater than 1000. So whatever rows we got as part of e dot department id is equal to 50 that is 45 rows, out of the 45 rows it will check each and every row to see whether those department ID has salary greater than 1000 or not. If those department ID equal to 50 has a salary greater than 1000, only those rows will be retained. And those department ID where the salary is not greater than 1000, those rows will be discarded. So your E dot salary becomes your filter predicate. We'll talk about more how do you read the execution plan in the forthcoming slides as well. Now in order to understand the execution plan in better, we should be aware of certain concepts like cardinality, access path, join order and join types. These are all part of the execution plan. Cardinality is nothing but it will tell you are the correct number of rows coming out of each object. For example, in this execution plan, if we see the estimated rows as 1, it means if we execute the operation number 3, it is expecting one row. It means one is the cardinality for this operation. Since it is a unique scan, it will always estimate only one row as part of the output and the cardinality becomes one. So in simple words, cardinality means how many rows we are expecting out of each operation. Similarly, in operation number four, we are expecting only one row. So the cardinality for this operation will be one. The lower the cardinality, the faster the execution plan and faster the query will execute. Second is the access path. Access path is nothing but is the data being accessed in the best way. For example, operation number three is accessing the employees table using the index. So we have to ensure that we have 
index unix can mostly so that it executes much faster and avoid a full table scan in other words access path simply means what is the best way to get the data out of the table third is the join order it will tell you whether the tables being joined are in the correct order or not so that we can eliminate as much data as possible in the initial phase itself for example in this operation the join is between the employees table and the departments table and since the cardinality is one we can safely say that it has eliminated as much data as possible in the initial phase itself fourth is the join type join types are nothing but whether the right type of join is used or not when joining two tables the different types of join types are nested loop hash join sort merge join for example in this execution plan the oracle has made use of the nested loop join we'll talk about more on what are the different types of join types in the forthcoming sessions like we discussed in the previous slide cardinality is nothing but the estimated number of rows that will be returned out of each operation now if we want to calculate the cardinality of a single column this is the formula cardinality is equal to total number of rows divided by total number of distinct values for example if you have a table with 100 rows and there are only 10 distinct values the cardinality will be 100 divided by 10 that is nothing but 10 rows so cardinality is equal to 10 in this case cardinality is very important because it influences the access method and the join orders now as and when the data gets inserted or updated or deleted the estimation of the cardinality can go wrong some of the possible ways are due to the data skews data skews means the data distribution is not uniform across the table for example in employees table with 100 rows it is possible that there is only one row which is male and 99 rows are female this is a typical example of data skews another cause of cardinality that can go wrong is when a function is wrapped in the where clause predicate in the execution plan you can encounter these different types of access paths that is full table scan table access by row id index unique scan index range scan index skip scan and so on if you want to see the complete list of different access path the oracle has you can refer to the below link similarly you can see these different types of joins in the execution plan that is nested loop join hash join sort merge join and cartesian join joins are basically used to retrieve the data from more than one table 